Hey guys, how's it going? Now, the concept of death. Alright, when you're dead, you stop thinking, you stop breathing, and you stop talking, you stop seeing shit because you're fucking dead. However, this is because when you die, your organs stop functioning, your brain stops functioning, your... your vocal cords stop functioning, basically everything in your body stops functioning. And, yes, of course, the brain shuts down, shuts everything down, blah, 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 this or whatever. And, however, when you die, you have no idea what fucking happens. You're just sitting around here laying down pitch black. What I'm trying to say here is, in the aftermath, or in the afterlife, they may bury you to the ground. That's the traditional way, and whatever. However, if you want to come back from the dead, your brain will start working again, but however, you'll become a zombie. Okay. Fucking dead giveaway here. House of the Dead, people. Let's go to my room and talk about this fucking game. Now, many of you guys know that House of the Dead has released on arcades. That's right. Your local arcades, on your nearby pizza parlor, on casinos. I've seen that on a casino, trust me. I mean, there's casinos that have the honor to give people who don't like to gamble at video games that they're not gambling on, and it's fun. And of course, it's been around in movie theaters. I mean, holy fucking shit. Uh, the House of the Dead was a really popular game back then. And however, when the House of the Dead finally came to home consoles, it came exclusively to the Sega Saturn. However, we fast forward to now, and the US version is expensive as fuck. But however, I managed to get the Japanese version, which is cheaper compared. You know what, actually, as a matter of fact, way cheaper compared to the U.S. release. I mean, if you want to find the U.S. version, you're gonna have to pay like, like fucking, I think like 60 to like a hundred dollars. I mean, so far, yeah, the pro so the price I've seen at its highest. I mean, the U.S. version is very rare, but however, you can acquire the Japanese version for a cheaper price. I got mine for 20 bucks. Yeah, around 20 bucks. However, surprise, surprise, I can play this on my US Saturn. Why? Because it's courtesy of Action Replay Plus, my friends. Action Replay Plus. Now, in House of the Dead, you are one of the secret agents who are sent to investigate a huge mansion slash laboratory. And of course, you have to fight zombies. That's right. Hordes of the undead are now flooding it, and the one responsible for the chaos is up to something evil. And up to something evil that could be the threat of mankind. So, of course, what you basically need to do is shoot shit. It's a fucking light gun shooter, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't, you don't, rem you didn't know this? How could anyone not remember House of the Dead? Come on, now you shoot zombies! Anyway. I've played this game in the arcades, so it should be a breeze for me to jump in and fuck some shit up. Alright, now let's shoot some zombies. Boom, boom! But I have noticed a decrease in frame rate compared to the arcade version. Oh, right. I keep forgetting about that. Alright, you angry pets, come at me. Oh, I took him down. And you stay out of my way. Ah, oh, dang it. I really gotta kill my enemies faster. Hey, where the fuck is his cape? Hold on, that is not what I remember in the fucking arcade version. Where is his cape? Right. All right. If you are very fond of the arcade version, you will be disappointed if you're looking at a perfect arcade port. Because the Sega Saturn, when it released for the US, however, if you think about the Sega Saturn specs all together now, I, I wouldn't expect a full, like, the problem here is when it comes to, like, uh, porting arcade games to home consoles, there will end up being setbacks due to the limitations of the system. House of the Dead is one of the examples of that kind of thing that happens when it comes to arcade to home console ports. Now, if you are expecting a fluid and smooth frame rate, you will be disappointed. 
If you are expecting Rogan to have his badass cape, you will be disappointed. And most importantly, you're going to run into some frame rate a lot. And also, oh yeah, loading screens. There's going to be loading screens. A shit ton of loading screens. I mean, if you don't like getting interrupted by a fucking loading screen, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, I know. It, it sucks. Alright, when it comes... I think what should have happened for the House of the Dead 1 is... The House of the Dead 1 was released for the Sega Dreamcast. To be honest with you. Or, as a matter of fact, I think the House of the Dead 1 should have been bundled with House of the Dead 2 and then released. That would be very interesting, to be honest with you. However, the House of the Dead for the Sega Saturn is equipped with additional modes. That's right. The Saturn mode, which is basically like... The original mode, of course, you can pick a character of your choice, and however, characters are limited. Oh, this is interesting. This is actually surprising to me, and I, I'm, I'm reacting to this thing. Alright, so what's up here is that you can select any character you like, but however, any character that you like could have limitations, like when you pick, let's say, G, you could get two health points. And when you get Rogan 2, you get three, or you could have two. Oh, there's some powerful bullet damage. Let's go with him. All right, let's see how you got your sh Oh, damn! Now let's check out the boss mode. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, the start mode. So let's go ahead and test that out on... Oh, hey! That's interesting. They gave you... All the boss fights uh, from the start. That's interesting. Damn. I mean, this is interesting because boss mode can let you practice with boss battles like all you want. I mean, actually, there. Yeah, that's a convenient idea. You might want to get to that when you get House of the Dead. So you just basically uh, just fight any boss of your choice. I think the biggest tactic here is to basically kind of like wait till the enemy starts charging at you or wait until the camera movement stops so that way you'll get a little bit more focus time I, I know it seems a little bit crazy and and I do kind of agree with you on that because you have to rush because you have to be quick if you do that if you want to save civilians or, or keep your life on preserve that kind of shit Besides, some enemies require you to basically... I died while I was trying to talk to you. Not really, but I lost a life. Anyway. Saw that shit? That meme was dank. I mean, besides, there are some enemies that, that will require you to wait for the enemy to be close to hitting you. When you're fighting the first stage boss, you might as well end up doing this anyway. Auto fire, unless you got like good precision aim. Or unless you have like a bigger screen where where your gun is calibrated good. Like I just did there. I end up basically using auto fire anyway. Holy shit, that's how I got by with this area. <laughs> yeah, I have auto fire on. If you have a light gun with auto fire, please put that to use. A lot of the times, if your aim can get pretty bad, or if you're having a hard time hitting your enemy's weakness or hitting the enemy at all, auto fire is going to be your friend. But like I said, um, I'm going to be planning on getting a bigger TV. Oh yeah, do keep in mind, this game has various routes. And again, I died trying to put my two cents. That's what happens when you do video game videos. Or doing videos when you're talking about games and having to get gameplay involved like that. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have shot the fat guy first. But hey, at least I got a life up from that. Like I said, the game has alternate routes. I mean, if you don't... Like, say, for example, 
if you shoot at something, you'll go to like a very different route rather than the normal assigned route. Oh shit. I shot at a fucking civilian. And speaking of civilians, if you, of another example, if you of course shoot at a Okay, now I can talk! Hey, what I was trying to say. And speaking of... Sorry, speaking of, like, civilians or hostages... I keep saying civilians. I keep getting them mixed up with the sequel. I'll talk about it in another video. But right now we're talking about House of Dead 1, this video. <clears throat> and I should have shot that zombie to the left. Okay, that was very close. Really fucking close. Alright, now when it comes to rescuing civilians, you get rewarded with an alternate route. If you don't, you'll get access to another route. I mean, there's various secret ways to go different paths. Normally, the path I used to go with is... I kind of shoot... Oh! The path I used to go with is I kind of save the guy at the bridge and then I shoot the little and then I shoot the zombie monkey on the left and then the zombie monkey on the right and then there's this guy hanging around here and I have to save that guy and then I just go through the bottom floor instead of going upstairs. The auto fire is like fucking seizure inducing. I am very sorry about that. If you want the game to run as smooth as the arcade version, get the PC version. Trust me. However, the reason why I got the game on the Sega Saturn is because I want to use my light gun. Just like traditional light gun games. And of course there is that PC light gun, but finding a uh, PC light gun that's compatible with Windows 10 is going to be a bitch. Anyway, let's get straight forward to what I think of the House of the Dead on Sega Saturn. Good port. However, you're going to experience a dramatic drop in frame rate. You're going to experience a dramatic drop of Rogan's cape. You are going to also experience a dramatic drop of going through a level without having constant loading screens. But however, after all, it is a pretty damn well impressive port. However, it doesn't hide the fact that the game should have been like held off and released as a Sega Dreamcast title. And let's be honest, when this game releases on Sega Dreamcast, it's going to end up running as smooth as the arcade version. But unfortunately, uh, it was the House of the Dead 2 that was only on Dreamcast. So unfortunately, the House of the Dead stays on Saturn. And I think to be honest with you, the House of the Dead 1 hasn't been re-released at all. Did you, did you not, did you notice that? 